hello all welcome back to my channel today we are going to look at some of the interview questions for Azure data engineer interview I had already uploaded uh, two videos part one and part two for Azure data engineer interview preparation please go through them as well now let's start our video so yes these are the basic mandatory questions which we can expect from an interviewer point of view during our interview and I am planning to cover all these in the video today so let's get started yes so uh, basically when you are doing a ETL in Azure data factory you have you have to get some transformations implemented right over the data it cannot be just copying data from one source to another target so when it is ETL or ELT there should be some transformation which is implemented so you can expect questions like how do you implement the transformation so to implement the transformation it can either be through SQL you can have a SQL stored procedure created and you can call those three SQL stored procedure inside your pipeline else you can use a data flow in Azure data factory which is going to do everything which you need in transformation point of view or you can have a, you can have a SSIS package executed from your pipeline but uh, try to do POCs on at least one of them so that you can be clear on how transformations are implemented over the data so in ADF it is not just like copying data from one source to another target right there should be at least a minimum set of transformations implemented over the data and implementing that transformation I have just included three of them but uh, you can try to do all three you can try to do POC on at least one of them so that you can be clear and confident okay so the next question is the type of data flow in Azure data factory so basically there are two types of data flow in Azure data factory it is up to the project requirement that uh, data flows are can be used for transformation or not but it is better to know what is data flow and what are its types okay yes so in map so we have two types they are mapping data flow and wrangling data flow okay so we use mapping data flows to visually transform data without you writing any sql queries or any code you can just have the source and sync defined and you can give the transformations which are required just by click and azure data factory will do all the logic and the code automatically in backend through databricks okay so mapping data flow it is going to visually transform the data but you don't have to write queries you just have to uh, right click and give the option and uh, give the required conditions as such okay and the next type is the wrangling data flow where you can visually explore and prepare the data sets using power query uh, and uh, you you can just focus on the modeling and logic so if you have already worked on power query this will be very familiar to you if you have worked on power bi and power query where you are going to filter out the data just by right clicking and giving some conditions uh, that is very easy right so wrangling data flow is similar to that okay but it is up to the project requirement uh, the data flow is implemented or not and it is better to know at least the types of data flow in ADF okay and then uh, one of the most uh, expected question the real-time issues handled in data factory okay so real time after developing and publishing your pipeline you sh you should be facing some real-time issues on ongoing time so let us look at some of the issues uh, major issues which uh, uh, we face during uh, uh, data factory pipeline execution okay so the first one is the duplicate data from source and filtering and updating data at pipeline level so after you have implemented a pipeline published a pipeline if you still get data from duplicate data from source our pipeline should be efficient enough to filter out the duplicates and then update our target or our sync database or wherever okay so that is one real-time issue 
second one see if the pipeline failed it has been working fine for 10 or 15 days or two months or something but suddenly if a pipeline fell there should be either some change in the source side or some change in the sink side right it can either be with the connection or whatever the most common one is the data type changes okay say you are getting data from a source system uh, from oracle or something okay and the data type of that column has been changed in that case the data type mismatch happens and the pipeline fails so this is one usual a type of uh, issue which we face in real time in case if there are any data type changes either in the source side or sync side the pipeline would fail okay and there are certain cases when you are using azure resources for uh, for all your transformation and for all your uh, uh, sync and source database in case if the Azure Active Directory server has some issues, the pipeline still fails. Okay, so this is a rare case one. I just added them because we faced it in our in our project. And in case of uh, on-prem source system, say you are getting data from an on-prem database. Okay, uh, you should always make sure the connection strings work fine. That is the link service work fine, and the integration runtime works fine. So the connection strings are not going to be changed usually okay but in case of on-prem database you should be clean in case if the pipeline is executing and it is queued for a very long time and it is not getting executed the issue will be with the self-hosted integration runtime in that case you can just go to the integration runtime stop and start the service again so that they come up again and the pipeline should start executing okay so this is one common thing which we face when we are having uh, on-prem data source system and uh, this uh, self-hosted integration runtime should be up and running always for that case and apart from this the common one is the changes which are implemented at the network level uh, which can stop our pipeline from executing okay uh, let's go to the next question yes uh, we uh, we should be very clear on what are the SED and uh, type 1 and type 2 type 3 of SEDs and how are they implemented so when all we do all, all our work which we do is about the data okay so when we are going to have tons of data coming inside we should be clear about how they are being processed we are we cannot have a complete load of data every time we cannot truncate the whole data and load them every time we can either have a delta of the uh, copy or either we should be we should have implemented uh, slowly changing dimensions which is the SEDs, right so I let me explain uh, the types of SEDs so we have three types type 1 type 2 and type 3 so the type 1 is going to do overwriting of data so when a new data is coming inside it is going to overwrite the existing data and the existing data is going to get lost okay so this is the default uh, type which is being implemented usually so whenever uh, we are going to load data from source we would take a delta copy of the uh, source or we'll take complete load of the data from source to our staging table and then with scd1 we are going to overwrite with the updated data and that is how the data is being processed okay and going to type 2 scd what, what it is going to do is it is going to retain the history of values say if a new record is coming a new uh, a new data is going to come inside a new record is being inserted into a table in that case the dimension table will be updated with its value okay and type 3 scd is going to create a current value field okay so it will basically store two versions okay for certain level of attributes so each record will have a previous value and current uh, value for the same attribute okay so that's what if you have any questions regarding my video or regarding any of the uh, discussions which we had for today please do comment i'll be happy to explain uh, thanks for watching the video thank you